What is up guys, ready to come with a brand new video and let's talk about the PlayStation 5. Today I'm coming with a different kind of video because I really want to shut down that rumor. Um, a guy named, I don't know, a bitch, because he's a bitch. Um, he said that the PlayStation has a Sony uh, heat problem and that's why Sony hasn't showed the console and he talked to developer this, developer that, oh I talked to developers and they say that it has many many problems because they clogging and shit like that. Yo, first of all, I always say don't believe the rumors, said believe what you want. But this guy knocked it out of the park and many people have covering this, even Rich Review Tech USA, that I love Rich, okay? I love Rich. But if they don't want to show a console, they don't want to show a console. So, uh, what we want to talk about is, is that Mark Cerny just dropped something very, very cool. PlayStation 5 cooling solution will make you quite happy, Cerny says. Contrary to the rumors, Sony PlayStation 5 should have a powerful cooling systems that adequately manage heat dissipation. And by the way, I'm leak, um, I'm reading this tweak town. This is an article I found on Twitter. A bit ago, we reported that some of the rumors that the PS5 overheat due to big cooling issues. And that's the reason why Sony hasn't showed the console. But as many have suggested, this is extremely unlikely. The PlayStation 5 was built from the ground up with a heat management in mind. There's a lot of cover here, so forward, this is the big article. Sony PlayStation 5 should have been a robust cooling, uh, cooling solution that not only adequately managed, uh, uh, managed to reduce fine, fan noise. The reality is that PS5 has been built around proper heat dissipation from the get-go. The, the PS5 powerful 8-core Sen2 CPU and 10.3 10 teraflops Navy 2X GPU COC can belt out some serious performance, but they also require increased electrical power to heat their respective thresholds. And with more power draw comes more heat. Sony recognized this issue from the start and literally re redesigned how the CPU and the GPU operates in the PlayStation 5 to ensure optimal heat management. In, uh, in his recent TikTok, PS5 architect Mark Cerny discussed how this meta uh, method works. Hardware-wise, the PS5 will have a much bigger fan and a power supply than this time around. And that is to be expected because the C the, the 7 admin chip needs much more power to hit the peak performance in comparison to the Xbox Series S has a huge 130mm and a vapor chamber cooler complete with a 300WPC PSU. The key to the next gen system cooling is actually tied up to the PS5 variable CPU and GPU frequencies. And the console always on boost mode actually enable high end cooling instead of handling it. Everybody, everything depends on the variable frequency and how the console draws power now dictates workloads. Cerny explains how previ pre previous generation cooling systems were made around guesswork. Sony had to guess at theoretical max performing levels in specific games and build a fan and a PSU around that. The result is that PS4 jet engine sounded holy fucking shit. That is fucking true. That when I was playing God of War or playing a, a big massive game like Call of Duty or shit like that, it goes like and, and I can have everything shut down and you can literally hear a jet fucking sound coming from the PlayStation. Um, this solution works but was inelegant. The PS4 SOC ran on a constant lock frequency and drew more power as needed, leading to lots of inefficient thermals. So the more demanding a game was, the higher the power draw and the more the fan roar up. There's a uh, certainly, and I quote, there's a lot to be said for faster. Assuming you can handle the result power and heat issues, which frequently we, have, we haven't always done the best job, Cerny said. Part of the reason for that is historically, our processor, CPU, and GPU frequencies rely on some heavy duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside the console. Power consumptions vary a lot from the game to game. When I play God of War on my PS4 Pro, I know the power consumption is high just by the fine noise. And holy shit, that is true. 
But power isn't simple about in engine quality. It's about mini, uh, minute of what being is displayed and how it's counter initiative but processing dense geometry typical consume less power than processing simple geometry. Which is why I suspect why Horizon Zero Dawn map screen with its low triangle count makes my PS4 Pro, by the way, heats up so much. Our process on previous console has been tried to guess what the maximum power consumption during the entire console lifetime might be. Which is to say, the worst case in the worst case game and a prepare for a cooling system cooling solution that we think will be quiet at the power level. If we get it right, then the noise is minimal. If you get it wrong, the console will be quite loud for the higher power games. There isn't even a chance it might overheat and shut down if we misestimate power to that length. Certainly acknowledge that PS5 Sen 2 CPU presented tough challenges insofar as cooling. The CPU quite powerful, especially when compared to the other Jaguar-based CPU of old, but it's also more powerful hungry. Certainly says to enable the full brunt of the same 2 CPU and gives developer more maximum power. Sony has to noticeably increase the system fan. This development was planned out at the very beginning, right? So, the place Sony said, PlayStation 5 is especially challenging because the CPU supports 256 bit native instruction that consumes a lot of power. They're great here, there, but presumably only minimal use are there. If we plan to form a major 266 bit instruction usage, we need to get the CPU look clock substantially lower or noticeably increase the size of the power supply and fan. So after much discussion, we decided to go with a very different direction on the PlayStation 5, certainly said during the, presenta the presentation. The PlayStation, the PlayStation 5 SoC was created with the thermal mind and the CPU and GPU selection. The frequency and the RAM, even the SSD, everything was paired up, scale and customized to reduce, reduce the manage in the official possible. Holy shit. So Sony has said that the PlayStation was built up with cooling system in mind. So the build, the final build will be the final build to say that the PlayStation 5 will not overheat. We built a GPU with three uh, with 36 CUs in mind. Mind you, our DNA 2 CUs are large. Each has 62 more transistors than the CUs we were using on the PlayStation 4. So if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA CUs equates to roughly 58 PS4 CUs. It's very sizable GPU. Then we went in a variable frequency strategy with the PlayStation 5, which is to say we continuously run the GPU and CPU in a boost mode. We supply a generous amount of an electrical power and then increase the frequency of the GPU and CPU until they reach capabilities of the system cooling solution. It's a different, completely paradigm. Rather than running constant frequency and letting power vary based on the workload, we run essential constant power, let the frequency vary based on the workload. And for last, we then tackle the engineering challenge of the cost effective and high performance cooling solution designed for the Pacific power level. In some, in some ways, it becomes a more simple problem because there are no more unknowns. There's no need to guess what the power consumption in the worst case game might have. As for details of the cooling solution, we're saving them for a teardown. I think you'll be quite happy with the engineer tier, with the engineer team came up with. So, what the fuck that means in some good ass fanboy, console gamer, and PC player, <laughs> Sony just shut down that motherfucker. So the PS5, I mean, it, let's be honest, both consoles may have problems. We don't know power, what problems when we overheat. It may be that, I don't know, something came out. But all I want to say to you is that Sony ain't fucking around. To all your motherfuckers saying that the PS5 will fail, you can go to fucking hell. Nah, I'm just joking. I'm just joking, okay? But don't go out saying that the PS5 will fail because you're a fanboy of the, of the Xbox Series X. You have to be neutral in these times, okay? You have to be neutral. They're not on war no more. They're not on war no more. You can have a powerful console, but at the same time, you can have a console that is or for developers to be more efficient. That's true. 
So guys, there you have it. I'll link the link down below so you can check it out, read it, okay? And I'll see you next time on the next Ready to God show. Peace.